Hi guys, so in this video I thought I'd do something a little bit different again. I, th I thought I'd talk about um, my old uh, James Bond VHS collection from the early 2000s. Um, absolutely love the James Bond movies. Um, don't really want to talk about them too much in this video. I just want to sort of get into the old VHSs that I collected and just can't seem to part with. Um, even though VHS is pretty much gone the way of the dodo now. Um... But yeah, um, I just absolutely have fond memories of going out each weekend, picking up a James Bond film and adding it to the collection. You know, finding one that you were missing, all bringing all that nostalgia back. So yeah, I'm just going to talk about my old VHS collection that I've got. Um, so it's number one to number 20. Uh, you won't see any Daniel Craig films in this list because back in 2006, VHS was pretty much on its deathbed by then. So, yeah, I'm going to kick it off and just show off the covers for these. Um, kicking it off with number one. And that is um, Doctor No with uh, Sean Connery. First Sean Connery film, first James Bond film, 1962. Um, great starting point for me. Um, yeah, great villain in this one as well. Um, Doctor No himself. Um, you have this sort of gimmick where if you put all the spines together, it makes this giant picture, which we'll see as we go along. Um, but yeah, the first the first two VHSs that I've got, I actually picked up with widescreen. I didn't actually realise that at the time. So for this and from Russia with Love, it actually just says widescreen across the number. But for everyone else, um, they're all standard. So yeah, I'm just going to add these as we go along now. Right, so number two is from Russia with Love. Um, great, great follow-up to Doctor No for me, this one. Uh, Robert Short the villain, as the villain. I love that scene where he gets absolutely fucking gut-punched with that knuckle duster and he just doesn't flinch at all. Scared me shitless. I was like, what is that guy made of? I love the scene as well where he has that sort of confrontation with Bond on the train. And he's like, come over here and kiss my... But, ah, oh, it's fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, so, look at the spine as well. And at the back. Just absolutely great. Just let me know in the um, comments as well if you guys actually remember these and remember collecting them yourself. Um, for me, you know, it was just it was just this great, great Bond journey to go on, you know, collecting all these. So, at number three is uh, Goldfinger. In my opinion... The most competently made Bond film uh, there is. I know there are there are some people that aren't exactly massive fans of it, and that's absolutely fine. I can completely understand why. But for me, uh, I think it's Sean Connery's best, but it's not my favourite Connery one. I'll get to that one in a minute. Um, but yeah, six nineteen sixty four, golfing absolute classic. Uh, so, coming up at number four is Thunderball. Now, to me, I had no idea this film existed. I thought Thunderball was something to do with the National Lottery. Um, and I, uh, that's when I first heard the word Thunderball. And I was like, have they made a James Bond film about that? Um, you know, stupid, naive kid that I was. But uh, but no, this was um, part of the series. So... Yeah, and it's a great thumping movie as well. I absolutely loved it. Um, I know this has a bit of a controversy with uh, how it, some of the people wanted the film to be made and eventually it caused um, the Never Say Never film to be made in the early 80s. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's a, uh, it's a cracking film, Thunderball. I love that jetpack at the op in the opening scene as well. Absolutely great. So, my favourite Connery film is uh, the fifth one, and that is For Your Eyes Only. Um, I absolutely love this one. I just think it's so good. Uh, it's my dad's favourite Connery one as well. Uh, well, his favourite Bond altogether, but it's my favourite Connery one. Um, yeah, Donald Pleasance as Blofeld in this one. Just absolutely great casting. Absolutely superb. <laughs> Rewatching this film, I don't know if anyone remembers it, there's a scene where he's holding the cat, and the cat's going absolutely fucking mad. Um... It's absolutely hysterical. I, I, um, I, I guess they just 
they just didn't notice it when they were filming it. It just looks absolutely... The poor cat looks absolutely fucking distressed. Um... But yeah, coming up next uh, from 1969 and the sixth film is on Her Majesty's Secret Service. The first and only uh, George Lazenby outing uh, for your eyes only. I think uh, Connery had got a bit tired of the role at this point and just wanted to bow out for a little bit and obviously came back for the next one, you know, Money Talks. Um, But yeah, I think this is the James Bond film that has... The best ending to a James Bond film ever. I, I won't dare spoil it, but if you've seen it, I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, coming up next at number seven from 1971, Diamonds Are Forever. As I said, um, Money Talks and Connery returned for this one. Not great, but the saving grace for me is the villains, Mr. Kid and Mr. Went for me. I absolutely love their demise at the end. Absolute ton of fun. And I think the first two... Homosexual villains as well. Um, if you watch the film, there's there's a couple of hints there. Um, but yeah, uh, it's fine. Not Bond's finest hour, but yeah. So that sort of saw the end of the Connery era, heading into the Roger Moore era now. Um, just kicking that off with the first one, that's Live and Let Die. Uh, sort of takes a leaf out of the black exploitation films that were coming out at the time with this one. Looking at the spine as well, and the back. Um, yeah, Bond girl in this one as well, Jane Seymour, absolutely stunning. Um, and the introduction to um, is it J- Sheriff J W Pepper as well? Get on, gets on a lot of people's tits in, um, but I didn't mind him. Um, I know some people absolutely fucking hate him in the next one, but I love that bit with the elephant. Just gets his own back on him. Speaking of which, uh, Man with the Golden Gun next. Um, yeah, uh, I've got a bit of nostalgia for this one. This was sort of my introduction to Bond, this one. Um, I remember seeing a TV spot for it with... Uh, there was a scene with Christopher Lee and Roger Moore. I just thought it looked absolute, an absolutely great movie. And I just remember the, the title, just it, it sounding like really a really, really cool film. Look at the spine as well. And the back. Love Nick Knack as well. Just think he's a great sort of villainous henchman. Like he should be up there for me with our job and Jaws. Uh, speaking of Jaws as well, um, coming up next, uh, Spy Who Loved Me. I think this is Roger Moore's most competent out in his Bond. Um, for me, it's not my favourite one of his, but uh, I do think it's a very, very well-made film. Even if you take the James Bond aspect out of it, it's, I think it's a good action movie for the time. Um, so, yeah, look at the spine as well. As I said, well, I should mention as well, some of these VHSs are, are really, really old and some of them are just absolutely battered, uh, particularly the last one. Um, just mm, bumps and knocks over transit and... Times and uh, with times of the times that have moved, I should say. Um, but yeah, getting back to the to the list, uh, number eleven, Moonraker. This was sort of uh, the studio's response to Star Wars, basically, because that was such a massive hit at the time, and space was all the rage. Um, so yeah, look at the back as well. And at the spine. Gets a bit silly for me, Moonraker, but it's all tongue in cheek and it's all harmless fun. It means well. Um so yeah, coming in again at number twelve. It's for your eyes only. I absolutely love the Sheena Easton song to this one. I think it's great. It's one of my favourite Bond themes at all. From 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 number twelve onwards, some of those songs are absolutely superb. They dip for me a little bit in the nineties, but yeah. Um Got some really dark moments in this one as well. I know Roger Moore wasn't too big of a fan of some of the things he had to do, particularly kicking the the car off the cliff. I know he wasn't really a fan of that. Um, didn't feel it's it suited his version of Bond, but I'm glad they kept it in. It just made it feel a bit more gritty and real and a bit more ruthless. Um, but yeah, that's for your eyes only. A lot of people's favourite. Um, more one I think that one Um, so coming up next 
is Octopussy. Again, this is another one pretty similar to Moonraker. It just takes that step too far into the realm of silliness, but I still absolutely love it and still think it's so great and so much fun. It feels like a Frankenstein's monster to me, this one, of just parts of random movies sewn together. Like one minute he's in India, then he's dressed as a clown. Uh, yeah, the only Bond film as well to see Bond dressed as a clown. Um an alligator and a, and and a gorilla. It's like what you know what you, you couldn't write it, could you? Um, but yeah, Octopussy is just it's again it's a ton of fun. It means well, but it's no masterpiece. Oh, look at the spine as well. So yeah, as I said, let me know if you um, collected any of these and you know went on the hunt for them. So uh, yeah, eighty fives. A View to a Kill comes in next. Um, now, a lot of people have problems with this one due to Roger Moore's age, and yeah, I can see why completely. Um, too old for the role at this point, unfortunately. Um, but I love this movie. It's, it was one of my favourites. It's one of the ones I watched the most growing up as a kid. Um, I absolutely love Christopher Walken as Zorin. Um I just find that bit in the mine towards the end when he guns everyone down, like that is really ruthless and just re really, really strange. It just feels so out of place for me. But it's, again, I, I love the movie and I, for, for its flaws as well. Um, but yeah, my favourite Bond film ever by Duran Duran. Oh my God, they absolutely killed it. What such a fucking awesome tune. Um, but yeah, that's a view to a kill. Now, this next one, I have to ask people about this because for the life of me, when I was collecting the James Bond VHSs, could I fuck find the living daylights? My God, this film was like, it didn't exist. You couldn't, everywhere you went to, nobody had it. Uh, people were telling, telling me when we asked, oh, it's been withdrawn, it's been, it's out of print, you can't get it. Um, and we had to wait what felt like an eternity for it to get an actual official release. I don't know why, for the life of me, that was the case. Um, I, I really, really don't. I don't know if it was because there was an odd number of films released at the time and there was, they all had this buy one, get one free offer on um, and they wanted to take a film out. So it was, it was even, I don't know why, but... For the life of me, this one was missing from the collection for a very, very long time. I was lucky enough to have a taped version off the TV, which was my go-to Living Daylights. Um, but yeah, finally, finally got to replace it with this one. I think that this is why I can't get rid of the set because of how much effort and time I put into collecting these. I just really, really can't part with them. But yeah, let me know down below if that was the case for you. Um, if anyone else noticed that when collecting these but yeah Living Daylight getting back to the film itself I think it's great great song by Aha as well um, just a ton of fun um, Dalton as well unpopular opinion Timothy Dalton's my favourite James Bond uh, without a shadow of a doubt absolutely love the two movies he did and his next one Licence to Kill this is my favourite James Bond film of all time Um I don't care what anyone else says. I love this movie. It is Bond off the hook. Um, Crank to 11. It's the only one that's rated 15 as well. Um, yeah, I think it's so great. Even the text just screams like Miami 80s kind of vibes to it. I absolutely love it. I just think it's so, so good. So rewatchable. So violent as well for a Bond film. Um, the two women in it as well are just absolutely stunning. Knockouts, great performance by Dalton and a great villain as well. Robert um, Darby, just so, so, so good. Shame that was his last one. I think he lost interest in the role and for for, cop, uh, for um, legal reasons, there was a bit of a gap between movies, uh, about six years. Uh, eventually, the, the studio got its shit together and we got Goldeneye, the first uh, Pierce Brosnan movie. I believe they were after Pierce Brosnan for a while as well. Um, but everything just seemed to line. The stars aligned in 1995, and we got Goldeneye. And Goldeneye is a pretty solid, decent movie. Um, 
I just think it's fantastic. I love Sean Bean in this film as well. I just think he's great as um, the villain. Just absolutely superb. Uh, the best Pierce Brosnan one, in my opinion. Uh, so coming up next is Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, this is the one that I sort of really remember hitting cinemas first. Um, I remember walking down Allerton Road and seeing people queuing up to get in that cinema um, for this one. Uh, I think this is a, a pretty good movie as well. I don't think it's as good as GoldenEye. Um, look at the spine as well. But yeah, I think it's great. I love Jonathan Price's Carver, the villain as well. He's, he's just... He's so I love that scene where as well when all the, all the, he's doing this big press fair and the whole thing shuts down. He's like, you're fired, get out of my sight. It cracks me up. Um, but yeah, tomorrow never dies. Uh, so, coming up next... Probably my least favourite part of these um, sort of goes on a dial, uh, downward spiral for me with these. Um, that is The World's Not Enough. It's okay. It's fine. It's got a good opening sequence, but for me, other than that, I think the rest of the film's pretty forgettable. I kind of think Robbie Carlyle's a bit wasted in this one as well. Um, but it was good to see Robbie Coltrane come back from Goldeneye as well in this. Um... But yeah, I think it's okay. It's it's not um it's not making the top end of my favourites by any means. Um so yeah, and the last one we got from two thousand and two, Pierce Brosnan's last film. That's Die Another Day. Uh less said about this one the better, I guess. Look at the spine and the back. And yeah, that's it. It's a bit worse for wear this one, as I said. There's just absolutely some of these got absolutely battered in transit. Um, but yeah, as I said, I just can't bring myself to part with them, even though I've got them all on Blu-ray now with the Daniel Craig ones as well. I just absolutely love these and just think they make a fantastic display piece. Um, really, really do. So I'm just going to leave that there and just say um, I've hoped to sort of spark nostalgia memories for people with these, but. Yeah, I absolutely loved collecting these and the effort and time and money saved to put in to get these was is just is too great for me to part with them. I, I really, really can't. Um, as I said, I think they just make a fantastic display piece. So let me know your thoughts down below about whether you collected these or not. That's absolutely fine. Um, I've just got so much fun memories of these movies. A classic, classic Saturday Night Viewing, in my opinion. Um so, yeah, I'll leave the video there and just say thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please think about hitting subscribe and if you feel so inclined to do so. And I'll just say stay, stay safe and take care. Thanks very much.